Hey everybody, it's Curtis here with Camping Cregans, and a few of you have reached out and asked me a little bit about the gear that I'm bringing and the gear that we're using on this trip and how is it working and if there's any tips. So today what I wanted to do is kind of share a couple of things we've been using that have proved to be very valuable on this trip. Now our space is limited. Space is always limited when you're camping. We've got a, a five foot pickup truck and our little scamp. So everything that we bring really needs to have uh, a, a great use and a great purpose. We've already sent some things back that just, you know, didn't justify the space that they were taking. So really, space is key. You got to be using this stuff. So I just want to take you through a few things here that we found really helpful, really valuable, and, and stuff that, uh, you know, moving forward, we probably won't camp without. Number one is starting with one of these high-end coolers. If you're like me, you probably looked at the price tag of some of these coolers and thought that that was absolutely insane and really stupid to kind of spend that kind of money on a cooler. Well, I was of that mindset until we started planning for this trip and really looking at the temperature variations that we were going to be going through. And, you know, in Texas, it was 80 degrees. You know, we were in 11 degree wind chill the other day. So a huge range of temperatures that it's really important, number one, to keep our, our food cold but not frozen. But also number two, during this pandemic, we don't want to keep stopping and getting ice and filling this in because, you know, that's one more contact point that we're going to have in engaging with, with people that may or may not be taking the, the right precautions. So we decided to splurge on this cooler and it's been fantastic. Um, it, it's, it holds, I've got the 45 um, liter, I think, yeah, 45 liter size and that's perfect. And, and I put a little divider in there. So on one side, I kind of take my frozen food and pack it in ice cubes and, and ice packs that we freeze at our Airbnbs. And then the other side is just kind of like cool storage. So fruits, veggies, stuff like that. So um, I love that divider. Uh, it's like 10 bucks. I thought it was stupid, but I guess I was just in a stupid spending mood, but I'm so glad I did. So that divider really helps separate and helps kind of organize and manage the cooler a little bit better. And it also, ends up being a great kind of campfire seat and a place to put my stickers. So that's the Arctic uh, cooler, similar to the Yeti, but a bit less expensive. Next, I wanted to show you our cooking stove. So I love to cook. That's definitely part of camping for us. Um, and I think like many, I grew up on this green Coleman stove, um, which is fine if you want to boil water. Well, I like to do a little bit more than just boil water. So I started with the Coleman. It was fine, but I needed a little more. I wanted a little more control. I wanted to go a little bit lower if I wanted to kind of simmer a sauce or, you know, eggs without scorching them um, and still have that power to boil water when I wanted to. So I ended up with a Camp Chef Everest. Um, there's now, I think there's a version two or X2, whatever. It's, you know, slightly different design, but the features are, are all the same. Um, got this off Amazon and really, really happy with the performance. So as I mentioned, it goes down really low. So a low simmer does a fantastic job there, but then you crank it up, this thing cooks. Um, you know, it even like matches a pro range that you would get in your home. So I think this tops out at 20 or 22,000 BTUs. So there ain't nothing that needs more heat than that when you're out camping. So this has been, been really great for us. Along the lines of <coughs> cooking is this $15 hose. So if you're a camper, you know all those you know, one pound green propane canisters that, that you're always trying to find in the grocery store that always seem to be running out when you're in the middle of a dish. So that was frustrating. It was wasteful, quite honestly. You know, all those metal containers, you know, a lot of them aren't being recycled. So I ended up getting this, this thing and it connects that LP tank that you have with your grill and connects it to the stove. So with this, I have that big tank and I'm never going to run out. And the bonus for us with the Scamp is I have room for two LP tanks. So I bring two LP tanks. One LP tank is for the Scamp that covers, you know, the stove inside, the fridge, um, heat, hot water. And then the second tank I use for this. So super convenient. I'm never running out. Uh, and I still have that spare backup with the two tanks at, at camp at any given time. So a huge, huge plus in getting, getting this extra, extra hose, extra connector. Moving on to some of the creature comforts of, of camping. And rarely, rarely do you hear that creature comforts of camping. It's all about roughing it, right? Well, I do like to rough it, but not all the time. So 
with this next item, I've got my coffee set up. So with it, I've got my French press and I've got my coffee bean grinder. Now, we're camping, we're bouncing down the roads. These glass carafes that you usually see with French presses, no bueno, they're gonna break, it's gonna be an absolute mess. Also, they're gonna cool down super fast if you're out camping in the cooler weather like we are right now. So I got myself a metal insulated French press, kind of a large, I think it's like a four cup capacity. Um, but whatever, it's a little bit bigger than normal, which is great for us. Um, and I also got this hand grinder. So this hand grinder is Java Press with an E, and it's, it's just a great little, you know, a little something special in the morning to, to get some freshly ground beans, throw it in the French press, and, uh, and have a really nice cup of coffee. You know, we're not running off, off to the train or, or, you know, to jump on, on the computer for emails when you're camping generally. Um, so take that extra time and do something a little nice for yourself. So that has been a great, a great kind of a bonus uh, on this camp trip. So next, in line with the camping, uh, the cooking, and the enjoying food and stuff, and I've already been made fun of this, so bring it on. Um, it's a knife sharpener. It's a knife sharpener. This is called Bavarian Edge. This is actually one of the best knife sharp sharpeners I've ever used. They're inexpensive, um, super simple, and they put a razor, a razor edge on your knives. So this has been great. So as I said, or I may have said earlier, we're kind of mixing between scamping and uh, Airbnb. In fact, we're at an Airbnb right now in Mesilla, New Mexico. Really beautiful. Check it out. Um, but a lot of times you check in at Airbnbs and these knives are dull, dull, dull. If you're like me and like to cook, a dull knife is just absolutely maddening. So I bring this knife sharpener, I put an edge on the knives in the, in the you know, Airbnb, and then I can enjoy cooking, but also it leaves something nice for, for the people coming behind you. So if you have the room, if you're going to be out for a while, you know, a little knife sharpener is a, is a nice little touch to bring. Sticking with the theme of kind of creating some creature comforts for yourself, I mean, listen, it's hard, right? When you're camping, you can't just kick off your shoes and kick on the, on the couch and relax. It's, it's, it's a little bit more work. So where you can kind of introduce some, some comforts, I think it's really important and it helps keep, keep uh, everybody happy uh, and enjoying the experience. So this is one of those Eno hammocks. Um, we got this last summer out in Bemidji, Minnesota, a really cool store, it closed. Um, but this has been awesome. As you can see, it's very, very small. Um, this is a double nest. I think they have a single nest and a double nest. Um, I highly recommend the double nest. If you're like me, we've got two kids, and of course that hammock is gonna be sitting unused until one is in it, and then the other just has to use it. So the double nest, it, you know, allows for two people in it. it. It attaches super simply to trees, to posts. It's, it's very versatile, very small, um, definitely worth, worth getting something like this. Just another place to relax because uh, sometimes you don't always want to lay in the tent or in the camper. Here's one item that I never, I've never brought with me on a camping trip and I'm so glad I did. This is a portable air compressor. So What's really important for us on this trip is that we kind of keep things going well. So I don't want to be losing a tire on the highway. I don't want to lose a tire on my car or the scamp. So I need to take care of it. And again, I don't want to keep stopping at gas stations and that's more stuff that I have to touch and engage with. So I brought my own compressor. I'm checking my tires, you know, certainly before every long trip, the tires on the scamp and on the truck, and it just kind of keeps things rolling and I'm, I'm just paying attention. It also forces me to get a little closer to everything and make sure that everything still looks good before I jump on the road and, and you know, head out for some of these long travel days. So an air compressor, battery powered, has been a huge, huge plus for us. And yeah, not so expensive either. Now into some of the more technical stuff um, and a little more expensive, um, but if you're planning on going out for longer trips, um, I highly recommend at least just start to investigate some of this stuff. So um, sometimes we're plugged in with our scamp in a campground, but usually when we're plugged in, there's an RV over there, there's an RV over there. It's not my style of camping. You're just kind of like, I feel like you're in a giant parking lot. So um, what this does, this is just a battery backup. And you might be familiar with Goal, Goal, or Goal Zero or Yeti. They make other kind of battery backups. But this is a 400 watt battery backup. 
This will charge your iPads, your iPhones, your AirBuds, whatever you want to bring that you need to charge. This will charge your cameras. Um, this has become invaluable to us as we're out camping. Um, now, it's important to remember that 400 watts, while it's fine for those little things, it is not good for anything that generates heat. So if you think about a coffee maker, uh, a hot plate, a microwave, anything that kind of bring, you know, needs heat, needs electricity to create something hot, doesn't work. This does not have enough juice. Um, but everything other than that, this, this, this does great. Now, well, before I skip ahead, these battery packs will give you some plugs. It'll also give you four places to charge um, your devices and then also a 12 volt, like a cigarette lighter type, type thing. Um, what I like about this also is you can jump a car battery. So if you're out in the middle of nowhere and your car dies, you need to wait for passing motorists. Uh, if you don't have your own cables in your car, which you should, um, you need to hope that somebody else does. But with this system, this has one, if a fully charged battery can jump your car once. So this is kind of another insurance policy and another, um, element that reduces the the need to kind of engage with other people and I, listen i love people during a pandemic not so much the, so. the next thing i want to talk about is our solar panel kit here this is an echo power it delivers i think 35 times three uh, just 105 uh, watts um, of power this is awesome it's a little suitcase when i say suitcase it just folds up Super small, super nice. You can tuck it, you know, really anywhere in your kit, but when it's time, you can just open it up and you can charge your battery with this. You can also charge your scamp. It's got connectors, little alligator clips in here that you can go right to your battery. So you can charge up the battery on your scamp. Um, you can even plug in a cell phone or a camera into this and it'll charge those. So really handy to have a power source. Um, on hand when you're out camping. I'll, um, generally, I'm not that desperate for power, but back in March when the world was falling, wasn't sure how much I was gonna have to fend for myself, so I went ahead and got this. New, these are between three and 400 bucks. Um, I'm sure you can get other options, um, but I think what's, what's really key is this smallness, because again, everything, everything, you know, takes up space and this real estate is limited in these vehicles. So the, the size was really, really important um, to me. You're, what you're looking at right here is this really cool company. It's called Fab Hab and it's a company that is partnered with um, some craft workers in Nepal and they weave these blankets or these, these rugs. And the super cool thing about these rugs is they're plastic. So this is reclaimed, recycled plastic, a lot of ocean plastic. They, they, these people get it, they put it into this really super durable rug, rug made out of plastic, um, and it's great. You know, put this outside of your tent, outside of your, your camper, um, and it's, it's not like solid, so if you're bringing sand and dirt with you on it, it can start to fall through. Now, it's not designed for that. There are products that are designed to do that but it doesn't hold moisture on top and it doesn't hold you know, fine sand on top. We were at White Sands National Monument um, a couple days ago. Awesome, go check it out. But you know, there was sand everywhere and this really helped kind of create that buffer zone between us and the scamp to kind of help shed some of that dirt before we came in. Uh, and it also has a great social mission, which is important to us. Uh, really happy to support Fab Hab. Um, coming in a variety of sizes and you can see some very bright designs and it's reversible same design but you can flip it you know on both sides I do prefer the standard issue standard size toilet but sometimes you know they're not always available and if you're traveling with kids you know and I want to go now I want to go now and a, and a crowded restaurant or a crowded grocery store is really not where you want to go in this has been awesome now this is big and not everybody has space for it but if you do have space I highly recommend it this is a Dometic uh, little porta potty um, it does exactly what you think it's going to do you know, it gives you a place to sit um, it holds like you have to fill a two gallon water reservoir and then you kind of pump it up with some air pressure and then when you do what you got to do you just there's a button here somewhere see i use it all the time there it is you hit this button 
flushes the goods down, and then you just empty it, just like that. And it really kind of sequesters um, the waste uh, into this holding tank on the bottom. Um, and then you put some little tabs that help dissolve, break things down. So th there was a huge ick factor for me when we got this. Um, but again, back in May or March, not knowing what we're gonna have to, how much we're gonna have to fend on our own, we got one of these. Um, these are much better than I thought. There's no smell. Those those uh, kind of those pods that you put in there they look like a Tide pod. You put them in there, kills any smell, breaks it down. So you know, it just it's it makes it doable for me. Again, not this was not what I was hoping for, but it's super simple. Slides slides under the the couch of the front bunks in our scamp, and you know can come out. So what's nice is we're at a, we're at a place. You know, everybody can get out of the scamp. You know, somebody can go in, do what they have to do, tuck this away, and and again, there's another point of contact that we're not we're not introducing into into our our day. So that's it, everybody. I hope you learned something because we are definitely learning something every single day. Um, I hope it was helpful. Listen, if you have any questions, comments, please put them in the comments down below, and I look forward to doing this next time. Till then.